Yo, I'm Bosk, you're on the Bosk on YouTube channel. No fluff, just stuff. We got crypto news and much more. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a lot of things, including DAOs and a very easy generator for DAOs. And that's why I'm super intrigued because there are many uses for a decentralized autonomous organization. And you may remember Aragon, which always makes me think of Aragorn. I don't know how you can't like the Lord of the Rings. Like, what a sweet series. For Frodo. This is a token that had a lot of popularity in the 2017-2018 era of cryptocurrency. But many feel it never really did much after that, right? But that could be changing. Uh, maybe this isn't the best case for the coin, but they have launched a modular, adaptable, easy to use stack, Aragon OS X and Aragon app. This stack is live on Ethereum mainnet. And what exactly is going on? Easy to use tools for every builder. Their OS X is lean by design, smart contracts laying the foundation, but the app is what's user friendly with no coding involved. And the OSX, you're right, it's the framework, security and flexibility. They, this is for developers, right? But it's the app that is way more exciting, at least for me personally, right? So I've already connected my MetaMask on the top right, I guess. So you click the top right and you connect, you connect your MetaMask. If you need a guide on what MetaMask is and how to set that up, bing, go watch that video. So by literally just connecting your MetaMask, you can now create a DAO. This is very cool. With this, you can mint tokens, you can set governance parameters, you can deploy your DAO on chain. And it's not just Ethereum, they've already added support for Polygon. So I click on create DAO, right? Step one, I'm gonna go ahead and select my blockchain. So let's say I wanna go layer two, uh, I wanna use Polygon because it's got cheaper fees, right? You know, from here, we can start putting in information, we can name the DAO, we need a description, right? Then we go next. Who can participate, right? Token holders. Tokens act as voting chips. The more tokens you hold, the more weight your vote has. One token equals one vote. You could also do multi-sig. Only multi-sig members can vote. So you can add your token on tube coin, right? For because we're on here on YouTube, and we'll make it tubey. That's fun. Why not? And so we distribute the tokens and how these are distributed, right? So let's just say we want 100 tokens, we get all of those, and then we go next up. For here, there's more parameters, but my point is, like, just that quickly, right? We just created a DAO. With this DAO, we can have decentralized governance. We have mintable tokens. This is really cool. And I think that some people will glaze over this and not realize, like, what a critical thing to bring to market especially for so many businesses this is going to open the door for so many businesses to pivot from being centralized to decentralized at least in some form shape or manner don't forget that shapeshift completely just deleted their centralized company their public entity and became a full-blown dow that's cool as Frodo. Obviously, I just gave the quick crash course on it. They have a whole guide on how to launch a DAO. What I'd love to know is if you have any reason you can make a DAO, you drop it down in the comments below. Let me know what you're doing, what you're making a DAO for, or where you think a DAO would be best implemented. And in addition to that, you better be entering our giveaways because we're giving away a mini Doge too. We're also working with Gold Show to bring a Tails Edition, very low quantity, probably just like 100 miners or something, really just for fun here. Uh, but to bring that to market with a sweet Mario themed design. I mean, have you seen the new movie yet? Yes! Fire! <laughs> Did you think it was good or bad? Because the reviews, they're mixed, right? We're also working on a Tails Edition uh, for an Evergreen Miner, which is a plug and play hard drive miner. I really enjoy these. They're fun, easy to use, they're profitable, low energy, low noise. But anyway, I'll link that stuff out down below. If you guys don't know this, I, I freaking love cryptocurrency mining. I mean, looking at just the, la the mission in the last 24 hours, Bitcoin put out a whopping $28 million. Dogecoin, $1.23 million of new coins mined. You add Litecoin to that equation because they're merge mined, that's $2 million. And so many of these other cryptocurrencies, even just on this limited list, are illustrating how much money is up for grabs. So I'm not trying to push it or shill it or whatever, right? 
uh, but Crypto Miner Bros has been great helping us source uh, some miners and especially some really quick turnarounds. Uh, so with Evergreen Miner and with Crypto Miner Bros, above all, if you decide to grab anything, please make sure to use the code VOSCOIN, not just for me, but because it saves you money. So please don't forget to use VOSCOIN to save some coin. You like that? I, I, I was writing a description the other day and I wrote that. I was like, oh, I, I, I like that. I like that. So people are sleeping on NFTs, right? And maybe NFT isn't the cool word to say anymore. I mean, Memento is calling them digital collectibles. And they're basing this all around social media content. And when you open this application, which I'll get to more here in a second, it really looks like a, like t like a TikTok clone. But imagine TikTok with NFTs. As a crypto guy, that really intrigues me. So huge thanks to Memento for making today's video possible and just keep helping keep Bosscoin in business. Because let me just tell you, YouTube ad revenue, it ain't enough. It ain't enough. What they're really trying to do here is create and collect social content, as well as sell limited edition content to the community. Is there really a market for that? Do people want that? There have been some cases that have proven that that is the case, like the NBA Top Shots. That <laughs> No, rise and fall in that category. There's many other examples as well. And don't forget that one girl was selling her used bath water. So there are some people out there that will buy anything. Yes, yes indeed. This isn't just some new app though. This is an article on Forbes from a year ago where Rodriguez, who's leading this project, boasted that there's already 55,000 users and they're growing fast. That, that was a year ago. So let's dive into the app real quick because, which by the way, they've got a giveaway going on. Give away hundred bucks for those that download the app. I'll drop a link down with the giveaway information down below. Again, this is through them, not me. Uh, so I, I come in here, I open the application, and I mean, it throws me right into a video, right? Uh, you know, behind the scenes when I unlock this. Unlockables are perks that come with your NFT purchase. Uh, so, for example, some things here would be meet and greet, tickets, merchandise, live stream. Uh, so, I mean, it's interesting to see, like, how... Like, especially for athletes, celebrities, that a platform like this, you know, could have a lot of utility for them. Instead of just selling a meet and greet add-on, I'd rather have some kind of digital collectible that also served as my ticket for that meet and greet. And how cool would it be if we loaded that with a picture of me meet and greeting that celebrity? This guy right here, he's waiting for the moon. Me too, buddy. Me too. Anyway, check out Memento down at the link out below. Oh, the drama never stops in cryptocurrency. Uh, so this isn't the latest news, but I haven't had a chance really to talk about it here on the tube. Uh, so I, I definitely want to address this, especially with the ARB content that we've had. The foundation will be severely damaged without blank check grant making powers according to the blog post. The Arbitrum Foundation began selling ARB tokens for stable coins. Dude, the foundation dumped on all of us. Bunch of idiots, I guess. Uh, they ratified the organization's nearly $1 billion budget. The price of ARB fell after Coindesk reported the post, with the token falling to 117 down 9% past the, uh, in the last 24 hours at the time they posted this. I mean, talk about being exit liquidity. What a terrible feeling. What a quick action to just go and get to dumpity dumping. They received 7.5% of all ARB tokens, and they got they went, they went quick to do some dumping. Apparently, they've used these in the interest of the DAO, including conversion of some funds to stablecoins, operational purposes, and basically, I guess they want to get paid. Uh, the first of these seemingly AIP, which is an Arbitrum Improvement Proposal 1, omnibus package that covered everything from governance to emergency powers to funding to grants. In the follow-up tweet, the foundation said it loaned 40 million ARB tokens to a sophisticated actor in the financial market space, referring to the market maker Winter Mute. It sold an additional 10 million tokens for fiat to cover operations. And Arbitrum promised to share more information soon. Uh, Arbitrum airdropped over a billion tokens or, you know, made them eligible to be claimed. Nearly 300,000 wallets as part of its effort to share power. Uh, but this is just, you know, it's, it's a rough situation, right? Uh, there's, there's a lot going on here. Uh, because yeah, like the the, t the team deserves to get paid. They need money to operate. They need money to build and things like that. And and you, know, you can only send ARB tokens out there so far. 
Uh, you know, there's also a volatile market and just, you know, building their war chest. Like, I do get it, but like, wow, to just turn around and be like, yep, it's cash in the end time, boys. And they're just off to the market. It's crazy. I don't think they really did this the best way, but please don't, uh, like, forget that most of these other cryptocurrency tokens have done all these same things. Don't think that optimism didn't dump on us because we're dumb plebs. Among many other cryptocurrencies that have airdropped coins. And let's talk about Uni. The Uniswap governance token, I mean, wow, talk about a boring token that's never really done anything that's reached very high token valuations. And don't get me wrong, like, Uniswap is very useful, it was very novel, but, ah, uh, anyway, I, I could go on, but basically, uh, the situation is a situation, and this was probably likely to happen one way or another, I think it just came so quickly, and a very large amount is very shocking. I don't even know why they tried to bring it to a public vote. Because they lost the public vote, by the way. You didn't know that. They lost the public vote. And then they're like, well, we already did this slash we're doing it anyway. Well, alrighty then. Well, if we're going to operate like that, I think that you're going to be subscribing. Whether you want to or not. And you're going to hit the thumbs up. Whether you were going to do it or not. Seriously, I hope you do. Uh, thanks for watching. That's all I've got today. Um, as always, I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video. Ba -ba -ba! Oh, 10 seconds of tails. You thought we forgot. That's my dog who's also the owner of Voscoin, AKA my daughter, because I freaking love her and she's a piece of our family. And Tails has been here before Voscoin. She runs these streets.